The Lord be with you. Thank you. It is good to be together in God's house tonight to hear his word and sing his praise together. Um, our opening hymn is hymn 576, My Hope is Built on Nothing Less. I, I think we have the words from the hymn before that, which is the same thing, but the, the chorus is just slightly different, um, where the, the last phrase is repeated twice. If you get confused, let's just, you just open your hymnal and we'll, it'll be hymn... Um, Oh no, we do have 576, which is the, the alternate tune. So let's go ahead, we'll do, we'll do that one as it's printed in the bulletin, which is hymn 576. And um, it's, we, we know the tune, we, we know the song. Um, the, the tune is, is uh, the one that we, we maybe aren't used to as much. So we'll go ahead and, and do that. Um, may God's peace be with us as we worship him this evening. Our opening hymn is hymn 576, My Hope is Built on Nothing Less.
This evening, our order of service is the Order of Vespers. You can find it in the hymnal on page 229 and in your bulletin. Please stand. O oh Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Make haste, O oh God, to deliver me. Make haste to help me, O oh Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. to you, O Christ, Lamb of our salvation. We speak responsibly the words of Psalm 40. I waited patiently for the Lord. He inclined to me and heard my cry. He drew me up from the pit of destruction, out of the miry bog, and set my feet upon a rock making my steps secure. He put a new song in my mouth, a song of praise to our God. Many will see and fear and put their trust in the Lord. Blessed is the man who makes the Lord his trust, who does not turn to the proud to go astray after a lie. You have multiplied, O Lord my God, your wondrous deeds and your thoughts towards us, none can compare with you. I will proclaim and tell of them, yet they are more than can be told. Sacrifice and offering you have not desired, but you have given me an open ear. Burnt offering and sin offering you have not required. Then I said, Behold, I have come. In the scroll of the book, it is written of me, I desire to do your will, O my God. Your law is within my heart. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. You may be seated. reading from Genesis chapter 4. Now Adam knew Eve his wife, and she conceived and bore Cain, saying, I have gotten a man with the help of the Lord. And again she bore his brother Abel. Now Abel was a keeper of sheep, and Cain a worker of the ground. In the course of time, Cain brought to the Lord an offering of the fruit of the ground, and Abel brought also of the firstborn of his flock And of their fat portions. And the Lord had regard for Abel and his offering, but for Cain and for his offering he had no regard. So Cain was very angry, and his face fell. The Lord said to Cain, Why are you angry, and why is your face fallen? If you do well, will you not be accepted? And if you do not do well, sin is crouching at the door. Its desire is for you, but you must rule over it. Cain spoke to Abel, his brother, and when they were in the field, Cain rose up against his brother Abel and killed him. Then the Lord said to Cain, where is Abel, your brother? He said, I do not know. Am I my brother's keeper? And the Lord said, what have you done? The voice of your brother's blood is crying to me from the ground, and now you are cursed from the ground, which has opened its mouth to receive your brother's blood from your hand. When you work the ground, it shall no longer yield to you its strength. You shall be a fugitive and a wanderer on the earth. Cain said to the Lord, My punishment is greater than I can bear. Behold, you have driven me today away from the ground, and from your face I shall, I shall be hidden. I shall be a fugitive and a wanderer on the earth, and whoever finds me will kill me. Then the Lord said to him, Not so. If anyone kills Cain, vengeance shall be taken on him sevenfold. 
And the Lord put a mark on Cain, lest any who found him should attack him. Then Cain went away from the presence of the Lord and settled in the land of Nod, east of Eden. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle reading for this evening is, uh, we'll hear the verses around Hebrews 12, verse 24, uh, starting with Hebrews chapter 12, beginning with verse 18. For you have not come to what may be touched, a blazing fire and darkness and gloom and a tempest, the sound of a trumpet and the voice uh, whose words made the hearers beg that no further messages be spoken to them. For they could not endure the order that was given. If even a beast touches the mountain, it shall be stoned. Indeed, so terrifying was the sight that Moses said, I tremble with fear. But you have come to Mount Zion and to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to the innumerable angels in festal gathering, and to the assembly of the firstborn who are enrolled in heaven, and to God, the judge of all, and to the spirits of the righteous made perfect, and to Jesus, the mediator of a new covenant, and the sprinkled blood that speaks a better word than the blood of Abel. See that you do not refuse him who is speaking, for if they did not escape when they refused him who warned them on earth, much less will we escape if we reject him who warns us from heaven. At that time his voice shook the earth, but now he has promised, yet once more I will shake not only the earth, but also the heavens. This phrase, yet once more, indicates the removal of all things that are shaken, that is, things that have been made, in order that things that cannot be shaken may remain. Therefore, let us be grateful for receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, and let us offer to God acceptable worship with reverence and awe, for our God is a consuming fire. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand as we hear the gospel reading. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 19th chapter. Glory be to you, O Lord. After this, Jesus, knowing that all was now finished, said, to fulfill the scripture, I thirst. A jar of sour wine stood there, so they put a sponge full of sour wine on a hyssop branch and held it to his mouth. When Jesus had received the sour wine, he said, it is finished. He bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Since it was the day of preparation, and so that the bodies would not remain on the cross on the Sabbath, for that Sabbath was a high day, the Jews asked Pilate that their legs might be broken and that they might be taken away. So soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and the other who had been crucified with him. When they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs, but one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear, and at once there came out blood and water. He who saw it has borne witness. His testimony is true, and he knows that he is telling the truth that you also may believe. For these things took place that the scripture might be fulfilled. Not one of his bones will be broken, and another scripture says they will look on him whom they have pierced. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We continue with the response for Lent. Deliver me, O Lord my God, for you are the God of my salvation. Rescue me from my enemies. Protect me from those who rise against me. In you, O Lord, do I put my trust. Lead me not, O Lord my God. Rescue me from my enemies. Protect me from those who rise against me. Deliver me, O Lord my God, for you are the God of my salvation. Rescue me from my enemies. Protect me from those who rise against me. You may be seated for our sermon hymn, hymn 433.
Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The text we'll consider this evening is the epistle reading from Hebrews chapter 12. Listen again to just the verses before the, the uh, verse 24 of our text. But you have come to Mount Zion and to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to the innumerable angels in festal gathering and to the assembly of the firstborn who are enrolled in heaven, and to God, the judge of all, and to the spirits of the righteous made perfect, and to Jesus, the mediator of a new covenant, and to the sprinkled blood that speaks a better word than the blood of Abel. So far the text. In the name of Jesus, whose blood sets you free, dear fellow redeemed. If you enjoy watching detective shows or crime dramas, then you already know that blood speaks. Crime scene investigators can learn a lot about what's happened in a particular crime scene based on the blood that has been left. Blood spatters may show how someone was struck with a bullet, with a knife, with a blunt object, and the DNA in blood may help identify the victim or see who else was bleeding there on the scene. Yes, blood tells investigators a lot about a crime. In fact, it may be one of the most helpful things in figuring out what exactly happened so that we can know and a conviction can happen and justice will be done. Well, today, in the Old Testament reading, we have what you might call the world's first crime scene. God, the judge of all, examines the evidence and hears the witness. But in this case, the witness is really rather a strange one. Abel is dead. But even though Abel is dead, his blood still speaks. It cries to the Lord from the ground, justice must be done. We want justice too, don't we? Maybe it's something small that's been done against us. Maybe it's something big that's been done against us or someone that we know and we love. Maybe it's against a whole group of people. We just would love to see people get what's coming to them. But usually that doesn't happen. I mean, even in the justice system, which is supposed to do this, doesn't always happen and doesn't always happen perfectly. So if we are counting on seeing justice here in this life, well, (laughs) we may very well be disappointed. That could lead us to fall into despair or to think that God doesn't care about doing what is right. Maybe we even decide to take vengeance into our own hands and do something sinful. Either way, it's not going to end well for us. So don't do it. What does God do when one of his creatures, one of his dearly loved children, is murdered for the first time? At that moment, God would be totally justified to just take Cain and wipe him off the map. Cain, we know, at that moment, has not only committed murder, but there are sins that have led up to that for sure. You could say that Cain was infected with jealousy, pride before that, and then hate. See, Cain was mom and dad's favorite, or at least it seems that way. His name means, I got it. And that's what Eve says once she gives birth to a firstborn son. Because remember, the promise that God had given to Eve was that a son of a woman would crush the head of the serpent. And Cain, and and so Cain, now that we have a son of a woman, this must be it. This must be the Savior right here in Genesis chapter 4. So he's named I Got It. He gets to do the work that God commanded his dad, Adam, to do, to work the ground along with him. But then when Abel comes along, Abel, whose name means nothing, literally nothing, was sent off to work with the sheep, he instead is honored by the Lord. And so Cain's pride turns to jealousy, and his jealousy turns to hate. Cain can't stand it, and Cain kills Abel. And so for all of these sins, God should punish Cain. All right, 
well, what about you? I mean, I doubt that any of you have actually murdered someone else or even taken their life. I mean, if, if you have, we should probably have a conversation about that, I suppose. But what about what Jesus says? Whoever murders, or whoever hates his brother, is liable to the same judgment as one who murders. And John tells us in his first epistle that everyone who hates his brother is a murderer. And you know that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. And that's not even addressing the other sins that Cain commits. I mean, have we been infested with pride in our work or in what has happened in our lives or what we've done? Have we been jealous over the blessings that other people receive that we feel should have come to us first? Have we hated other people because of what they've said about COVID policies, politics, or anything else? We see that in Cain's case, those sins led to death. That's where sin leads. Even if someone doesn't die directly as a result of things that you've thought, that you've said, and that you've done, we still have God's word, which is very clear that the wages of sin is death. We have blood on our hands, and we are all going to die. And so Abel's blood gives the guilty verdict. But as we hear from Hebrews, that's not the only blood that speaks. In this text, clearly we hear that Jesus' sprinkled blood speaks a better word than the blood of Abel. Now, what exactly that means is not necessarily clear from this text, because, I mean, anything, just about anything, is a better word word than the word guilty, right? To see what that is, we need to look at what Jesus says to other people, people who are very clearly guilty of certain specific sins. So, for example, Jesus in John chapter 4 meets a woman at a well. This woman has had five husbands, and she's with a sixth man now, and they're not even married. She's thirsty. She is looking for love in all the wrong places. And after meeting Jesus and hearing what, she, what he has to say, she runs back to town, but she leaves her water jar there at the well. See, she's not thirsty anymore. Now that she's met Jesus, she has what she's been looking for. Jesus tells her, whoever drinks the water that I will give him will never be thirsty again. It's pretty great words there. The same thing happens for a sinful woman who came and anointed Jesus' feet. If you remember, we heard this, this account a few weeks ago on Ash Wednesday. She comes in, she anoints Jesus' feet with her ointment and with her tears, and to do this, she has to crash a Pharisee's dinner party. They all look down on her, but Jesus told her what she didn't deserve to hear. Your sins are forgiven. Your faith has saved you. Go in peace. Now, it's one thing to be merciful and speak a word of forgiveness to people who have hurt themselves or people who have hurt maybe other people that you don't really know. But what about someone who has hurt you, who has hurt you directly and dearly? What does Jesus say to the people who have hurt him? We'll never forget what Jesus says and prays for those who crucify him. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Yes, after the, the whipping, the beating, the spitting, putting the, the crown of thorns in, on his head and pushing it into his scalp, after forcing him to lug a heavy cross up a hill and then nailing to him to it and leaving him there to die, Jesus speaks peace to those who put him on the cross. And that's not just for strangers, that's also for his own friends, his own friend who turned against him. Think of how terrified Peter very well could have been after he heard that Jesus was risen from the dead. Because the last time that Peter saw Jesus before his death, it was the Lord looking him directly in the eye after he had denied that he even knew Jesus for the third time. And from that encounter, Peter just leaves. He's nothing but a ball of tears. He just goes away and cries. 
But now Jesus is alive. How could Jesus forgive someone who had been so close but who had betrayed him so ruthlessly and miserably? And so it was one morning after Easter where Peter and the other disciples are out there fishing all night. They catch nothing, and then they see Jesus on the shore in the morning. It had to be him because then again you have another miraculous catch of fish. And so when they identify it as Jesus, Peter is the first one into the water. He's the first one to the beach. What's Jesus going to say to him there? Is this it? Is Peter done? Is he done being Jesus' disciple? Has he got to go home now and spend the rest of his life there? But instead of rejection on the beach, Peter finds breakfast that Jesus has prepared for him and for the other disciples there. And Jesus invites them to eat. Instead of their rejection, there's a question that's asked three times. Simon, do you love me? And with that is the the threefold command that Jesus gives Peter to feed his sheep and then follows it all by saying the words he said to Peter at the very beginning. Follow me. Jesus' word to Peter is also peace. And even for Cain, this is true. Cain, Cain clearly does not get what he deserves. God should have struck him down right there. He would be totally just in doing it. He should have killed him like he killed Abel, his brother. But instead, the Lord shows mercy on the world's first murderer. Yes, Cain has to leave home. Yes, the ground isn't going to produce any food for him anymore. But God doesn't leave him exposed. He gives him this mark, that mark which is not a curse, as so many have said before, but it is the promise of protection and of revenge from the Lord on anyone who would do anything to Cain. And so this, this is how the blood of Jesus speaks a better word than the blood of Abel. We don't get what we deserve. And in fact, God doesn't even just give our account a zero all the way across. He does even better than that. Listen again to, think about again what the, the uh, verse from Hebrews chapter 12 says that we have. Now, we haven't come to Mount Sinai, that horrible mountain, that horrible experience where even Moses was too afraid to go up. We've come to Zion. Mount Zion, the heavenly Jerusalem, you get to join in the celebration of the angels who threw a party when you came to faith. You get to come and be with them and join them in their celebration. Your name is on the rolls of this church of the firstborn. You come to the judge, the judge who makes you perfect, who makes you righteous, who declares you not guilty because you are in Jesus. And yes, you've come to Jesus. Jesus, who has a better covenant, makes a better deal with you. In the waters of baptism, you received his forgiveness as you were sprinkled with his, his love. And in the Lord's Supper, you receive that too, don't you? Jesus' blood given for you. So here, Jesus does for you, now that he has risen from the dead, what he did for those people we mentioned before. He gives you this living water so that you won't be thirsty anymore. He says that same thing to you, declares to you what he declared to that sinful woman. Your sins are forgiven. He goes to the Father on your behalf and says, as he said on the cross, Father, forgive them. And we know the Father's answer, yes, I do forgive them for Jesus' sake. And he calls us, once again, as he called Peter, saying, come, follow me. You see, God the judge, he doesn't just declare you not guilty. Oh no, it goes even better than that. He takes you. He adopts you. He makes you his own child. He brings you home. He makes you his heir. He promises you all the treasures of of his grace. And so the hymn says it well, doesn't it? Abel's blood for vengeance pleaded to the skies, but the blood of Jesus for our pardon cries. Jesus' blood speaks this better word to the Father, guaranteeing us forgiveness of sins. But Jesus' blood also speaks to us, to our hearts, when we feel that guilt, to know that we are indeed forgiven. And yes, our sins are forgiven, and we can know that for sure. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts 
and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Please stand as we join together in confessing our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our service continues with the Kyrie and with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, hear my prayer, and let my cry come to you. O God, whose glory it is always to have mercy, be gracious to all who have gone astray from your ways, and bring them again with penitent hearts and steadfast faith to embrace and hold fast the unchangeable truth of your word. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. O Lord, we pray that you would show your mercy to these for whom we pray this evening. For Mildred, for Eunice, Robert, Barbara Dean, Bob, Anna Marie, Verna May, and Charlene, who are in the nursing home. For Travis, Cameron, Kathy, Carla, Kim, Joyce, Penny, Janice, Stanley, Steve, and Mike. O oh Lord, be their, their comfort in their trouble and grant to them healing and faith. Lord, in your mercy. O oh Lord, for those who serve in the armed forces, we give you thanks for Joe, for Joey, and ask that you would uh, keep them safe should they be called to go into harm's way. We also ask that you would bless our nation, that you would grant healing to all those who have coronavirus, that you would give wisdom to the doctors and to all those who work in science for us, and that you would give your wisdom also to those in government. We, ask, we thank you for all who have been able to receive this vaccine and pray that you would grant success to that. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O God, from whom come all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works, give to us, your servants, that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey your commandments, and also that we, being defended from the fear of our enemies, may live in peace and quietness through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. You may be seated for our closing hymn, hymn 597, Water, Blood, and Spirit Crying.
Good evening. It is great to be with you uh, here tonight. Um, it appears that the uh, Easter Lily assignment is almost full, so uh, we're, we're glad that that is taken care of. Uh, please, if you have signed up for one, remember to pay Lindy uh, for that. Uh, thank you also to those of you who are joining us online tonight. And we were going to give a shot at making uh, a stream on Facebook, too, and hope that works. I guess we'll, we'll see. It didn't work. Lindy is shaking her head. Okay. Sorry about that. We'll <laughs> figure that out for, for next time. Uh, God's peace be with you as you, you serve him, and as uh, may he bring you back safely to his house on Sunday. Thank you. I know that people at the grocery store probably think, you know, that old man needs help, you know. Who, you? Huh? You or me? The people at the grocery store, the, the checkers and the clerks and stuff, they probably think that old man needs help. You <laughs> and me. Oh, and me. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, you want, you want some help out, you know? But no. I can, I can get out, or I said I need help in when I get home. Now, what is that? Why does that look so white? Is that what that wood looks like when it's on the camera? Like that? Well, nice, sweet. Kind of. Yeah. It's, it almost looks white. See yeah, that? it does. I think it's just a reflection it of the light. It's, 
But it, look at that. Look at yeah. how different that color is yeah. compared to the tan of the wood. It does. I always thought this was a neat design, this church. It I is. really have liked it. It is. It is. Do you know who did it? Uh, well, that's uh, from Polk Camp, wasn't it? The who, Borchers and Hypesaw? I think so. Really?